All right, so Crazy Aunt Kathy's been getting the gears in the media lately. The darling of the COVID tech bull market and the queen of irrational valuations went from hero to zero about as fast as it took Robozuck to bleed off half a trillion in market cap, i.e. very fast. Now, I know as much about Kathy as anyone who watches CNBC on the occasion. She loves innovation, she's valuation uh, agnostic, and has a boner for Tesla, but that's about it. So, I thought I'd have a look at the fabled ARK Innovation Fund. What makes it tick, how it compares to other high gross options for investors, and how disruptive innovation-y is it. So let's get into it. To kick things off, she hasn't done too bad. Over the past four and a bit years, ARK Innovation has averaged around 5.6% quarterly. And if you check out the Christmas tree below, you can see that it holds up pretty well against the NASDAQ, outperforming the composite by around 2.3% a quarter. Not too shabby. But things have really hit a wall lately. Since topping out just over a year ago, ARK is down 60% compared to the rest of the market, which, well, isn't. Oof. If you've heard Kathy speak or spent more than 15 seconds on their website, it's clear what basket they've put all their eggs into. Sprinkled in with a touch of high-mindedness and condescension towards those who haven't fully drank the Kool-Aid, the mantra of ARK is about finding companies of tomorrow that will disrupt the current working order. To that end, how true is Kathy to her evangelizing? Currently, the Innovation Fund has 37 holdings, and while a lot of the names are quite innovative, particularly in the genomics and biotech space, granted I spent most of my career as a healthcare investor, so I'm pretty biased, but a lot of the names don't really seem world-shaking. For example, I've had a Spotify account for more than a decade, and with over 80% of music being streamed, and with three quarters of Americans having used a streaming source, it's not really the disruptor it once was. And of course, Robinhood is the only company in the world with no commission trading. Except for, you know, its 20 closest competitors. Let me be clear, just because you did innovate in the past doesn't mean you should still be considered innovative or revolutionary now. Otherwise, we need to put Bayer or Xerox back on this list. Just looking at her top five holdings, which represent around a third of her fund, are companies in relatively established fields with fairly long lists of well-heeled opponents with competitive platforms. Some are still great growth stories and former big-time disruptors, but seriously, I owned Teladoc at my Sleepy Mutual Fund years ago and didn't think I was being particularly punchy. Basically, I think there's some truly wonderful companies in the CTF, but I wouldn't go as far as to say it's the portfolio of some brilliant futurist, seeing things that the rest of us are missing. I mean, DraftKings, really? Okay, so when it comes to betting on the utopian future that Coinbase and Spotify will provide us, ARK isn't the only name in the game. From here, I'd like to have a peek at the competition and how it holds up to see Woody and the gang. To do this, I put together a list of alternatives, including BlackRock's Future Tech ETF, Goldman's Future Tech Leaders ETF, Innovator's ETF tracking the Loop Frontier Tech Index, and Invesco's NASDAQ 100 tracker, the legendary QQQ. On a five-year basis, ARK edges out the decidedly less disruption-y QQQ, but lags the rest of the squad. Although this ain't too fair, since the other funds are pretty new, so it's not really a clean comp. But what's in these things? Now, obviously large companies can be innovative, particularly because they often have greater resources than smaller ones. But from an investor perspective, generally speaking, smaller companies tend to have more upside potential, as they are often earlier in the innovation cycle. Anyway, the average market cap of a company in ARK's innovation fund is around $8 billion. But the weighted average is much higher, as larger weightings skew the data. And, at present, sizes run the gambit from Tesla at nearly $800 billion to CompuGen sitting at around $230 million, or, measured differently, 0.0003 Teslas. Compared to the peer set, ARK's investments tend to be in smaller companies, with around 40% of the fund in small and mid-cap names, which is comparable to BlackRock's Future Tech ETF, while only Tesla falls into the mega-cap bucket. Although it's worth mentioning that over time, ARK has progressively moved away from smaller companies. For example, the portion of the fund in small and mid-cap names, now sitting around 39%, peaked at twice that in March 2020. Quite possibly, the fund is actually growing less innovation-esque. As for what sectors these guys are in, this is where it gets a little weird. As you'd expect, they're all heavily biased to the more growth and disruption sectors of infotech and healthcare. But, ARK is super biased towards healthcare relative to the peer group, which I think is, well, fabulous. Again, former healthcare analyst here, so you can ignore me. However, on the straight-up infotech side, ARK sits at around half the weight of the peer average of 64%. For investors looking for more pure play infotech exposure, these may not be the droids you seek. And while she did drink the innovation Kool-Aid, Kathy hasn't really bought too deeply into internationalism, with only six positions outside the US. Only the Invesco NASDAQ 100 tracker, which, you know, has to invest in US listed companies, has a higher bias towards familiar domestic waters. It's a big world, and innovation is everywhere. Kathy could be missing out on a lot of great international companies by not looking outward. 
And while I did say that growth investing doesn't necessarily equal innovation investing, her funds do seem to have a healthy dose of it. With the average position expected to return nearly 30% revenue growth over the next three years based on street estimates. And that figure is only outpaced by BlackRock amongst the peer set. That said, not a whole heck of a lot of ARK's companies are profitable. I was expecting as much, but damn. Don't get me wrong, I get that innovation takes time, but it's a bit disconcerting that some of these names were founded decades ago and still haven't turned a buck. This mix of unprofitable companies is around two and a half times that of its least profitable peer. Anyway, I think reasonable criticism against Miss Woods is fair. She makes the big bucks, so it comes with the territory when things go south. Personally though, I do have a lot of respect for her. While her style of investing and outlook on the world aren't my particular brand of scotch, I appreciate when people are genuine to their beliefs. And it should be said that there aren't a hell of a lot of rich pessimists. And while some might be pleased to respond to her repeated invocations that innovation is on sale with no, just your stuff is, the truth is that tech's been hit pretty hard and she's just been at the sharp end of it. There certainly was a lot of air under these peak valuations, as well as the fact that high-tech growth gets a disproportionate amount of their valuation based on forecast cash flows years into the future. This makes them particularly susceptible to changes in inflation and interest rates, particularly in analyst DCF models. And that's been one of the big stories since last fall. Moreover, a smattering of self-inflicted gunshot wounds in the space hasn't done much to build any confidence. But, and this is the growth investor in me coming out, in the long run, quality, innovative companies tend to outperform. Sometimes we just need to move the lens back a little bit to realize it. And finally, for people looking for alternatives to ARC, maybe give that BlackRock Future Tech ETF a look. Growth expectations are higher, and it's outperformed ARC by 33% since it launched a year and a half ago, along with triple the international mix and nearly double the weight in profitable companies. Otherwise, the crowd pleaser QQQ is never a bad choice. Anyway, that's my quick look at ARC Innovation. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing for more informative and hopefully entertaining financial content. This is a new channel, so every little bit helps with the YouTube algorithm. I'm Ryan, and thanks for tuning in to Market Lab.